Rob on was, was, was able to come on the lot to get food and everything. And God is doing some great things out here. Glory to God. Um, there was a young lady who was out there. She said she's looking for it. She, she wants to be in service this morning. And we thank God. You know, so God keeps doing things. So we're looking forward to her. She's going, she wants to be here around 11, 30 hours. So, but just thank God, just for the, the one, the wheel, one to want to be here, you know. So we thank God. So and again, thank God for giving us all strength to get up this morning <laughs> one more time. So we thank God for everyone that pressed their way out yesterday, pressed their way this morning, allowed us to be here. So God is an amazing guy. He keeps on great things for us. So we get ready to get started. And I was on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Glory to God. This is this the day. Is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Praise God. God. Praise God. God. Yeah. This is the day the Lord has made. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, Father, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come before you this morning saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Lord, for get, allowing us to wake up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that you have given us as we got up this morning. Thank you, O Lord, for having a mind to want to be able to come to the house of the Lord, a mind to want to be able to serve the Lord. Lord God, we thank you, O Lord, for the mind that you've given us, O Lord. We thank you for the breath that you have breathed into our bodies, O Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for the mobility of our limbs this morning. We just thank you for so much, O Lord. You are such a great God and a mighty God. And, o Lord, we come here to praise your mighty name. We come to lift you up, O oh Lord. We come to say thank you, hallelujah, for you have been good, you are good, and you continue to be good. God, glory to God. So, Lord, now we come to lift you up, come to give you the glory that's due in your mighty name. Lord God, as our sin school lesson goes forth, give us ears to hear and our heart to receive your word. We ask that you will come to understand to what thus says the Lord. Lord God, and we ask that you ask us to be doers of your word, oh yes, Lord. And Lord God, we be able to give you honor and glory to your mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is great. He's mighty. He is a great God. The scriptures. Psalms 100. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured to all generations. May the Lord have a blessed to read in his word. Amen. In Jesus' name. But that's time we're going to turn, out, turn into the hands of Lady P for our morning Sunday school lesson. Glory to God. God bless you. God bless you. We thank the Lord for being here one more time. Thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Thank the Lord, just as the pastor was saying, for the breath that he has given us and the ability to, to utilize that breath to his glory. Hallelujah. Don't want to take it for granted, uh, the breath that he has given us. Um, our Sunday school, um, thank the Lord for you and your presence uh, and for all those that will hear this later we asking God to teach this lesson we asking we asking God to teach the lesson we always we do that every week we ask God to teach the lesson every week because we never want to be up here in ourselves we never want to be in our own opinion because the thing is 
uh, when where the anointing is, that's where yokes are destroyed. That's where things change. That's where souls are transformed. And so no matter what goes on in the operation of the church today, we want to make sure God's anointing is full present because that's what's going to do the work. We don't want to get into a robotic state. We don't never want to be robotic. Yes, we have order because God is a God of order. But I always want to put him first. We always want to say, God, have your way and whatever direction you go in, because he's the only one that knows the minds and the hearts of everyone that enters the door. Everyone that enters the door. So we asking him to, to speak and give whatever is needed for all that enters the door and be and the and our God is so awesome and so magnificent. He can work on each and every one of us individually and collectively. We're all here together, but we all have individual needs. And God will take and fill each individual need in this one place while we are all together. But he utilizes us to encourage, uplift, and edify each other. That's why we come together in fellowship, and that's why we do what we do. Praise God. Our lesson this morning is saved. It's just that one word. Saved. Praise God for being saved. We are saved by God's spirit and God's grace. We, we Last week, we talked about the amazing grace. And without that amazing grace, we could not be saved. So the lessons are all evolving. And so when you learn the one from last week, it brings you forward to this one this week. Praise God. It brings you forward to this one this week. So we're looking at our focus verse that's from Titus 3 and 5. And it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. Our lesson text is also coming out of Titus. And we're going to go further into these scriptures in the searching of the scriptures. It's going to break it down a little bit more. And let, uh, Titus 3, 4 through 8 says, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly. I, I, I like that. I, 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 that caught my attention. These things, I will. He's telling us he would want us to affirm these things constantly. And that's what the word of God, we need to affirm the word of God in our lives on a constant basis because the devil is walking around looking and, and searching for who he may devour. But when we have the word of God affirming in our lives on a constant basis, then we put the scripture that says, resist the enemy and he shall flee. We put that in action. Because we are affirming the word of God in our lives. We are bringing the memory and to our, and to, and to uh, 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 manifestation the promises of God. That one part that says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. The one part that says he will, he'll fight our battles. All these things that he wants us to commit to our memory, commit to our spirit. And then all of this encompasses the scripture that says, hide the word in your heart that we may not sin against him. So when we affirm the, the, the scriptures, when we constantly affirm 
then we bring these things into manifestation, God's word, and it strengthens us and it keeps us and then it keeps us. And then the scripture in Jude that said he's able to keep us from falling, that is affirmed in our lives. And so the scripture continues to say that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. When we keep affirming the word in our lives, we maintain good works. And say, these things are good and profitable unto men. We want to be profitable. In, in God, we want to be profitable. We don't want to just go on. And profitable means we're going to have some good fruit. We're going to bear some good fruit. So when I'm saying pro when I'm saying profitable, I'm talking about the good fruit because everything about our lives is going to line up with the Galatian scripture that lays out what the fruits look like, the good and the bad. So we want to make sure that we consistently affirm and have the word operating in our lives so these things are good and profitable unto men. We're going further into our lesson, our culture connection um, uh, is talking about, and as we said, we are living the culture connection today. And so I just wanted to bring that home. These, these lessons uh, uh, always bring about a culture connection that connects us to the lesson. It connects our culture of today because we know the Bible is written over 2000 years ago, so some things is, is, is laid out in the culture of that time. So we talk the scriptures through context. We, we, a lot of the scriptures we look through, we look at it from context and we also look at it from revelation. And we look at it because the word is never exhausted. It is always for what's going on today. But here, so, so therefore the culture connection brings it to our culture of today. But we're living the culture connection. We have experiences all in our lives. That's the culture connection, okay? But in this one, it's saying Stanley Williams, McKenna Walker. And it's talking about this person that was educated uh, um, in the 1950s. And, and, he, and it was talking about how um, some people are richer than they realize, okay? That's what it's saying, they're, they're richer than they realize. And we have to bring that home to ourselves today. The Holy Ghost, when we have the Holy Ghost, we are richer than we realize. That's why we continue to seek the Word of God and seek the Scriptures so that we don't live beneath our privilege. We today, as saints of God and, and, and believers in Christ, live beneath our privilege because we speak things and, and, and we have, and it's not that we don't know, but sometimes we, we you know, our humanity and in, in, in Bible class, you know, we consistently talk about our humanity and how humanity, God gave us humanity because we are what? Human. So what happens is humanity steps in the way. Flesh steps in the way a lot of times. That's why we have to keep the word being affirmed in our hearts so we can operate in the spirit, so we can allow the spirit to consistently operate. But what happens is we are learning every day. We're renewing our minds every day. We're killing this flesh daily. So, some, so what happens is we, we may speak things in the atmosphere. We may speak things on our lives that you're not aware that you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? We are operate in, in our feelings and we are operate in the circumstances around us rather than saying what God said. Rather than saying, by his stripes I'm healed, we may give in to how we're feeling and that's humanity and then he brings it back to our mind and says okay lay hands on yourself you can pray for yourself because i've already healed you by my stripes you were healed so on the cross the stripes came then and so he's not getting any more stripes he already have the stripes and so when that comes back to our mind 
Then faith sets in and we start operating in faith. And faith comes by hearing because now we, we're bringing the word back to our minds because we've heard it already. And so this is what happens. So we tend to live beneath our privilege because we give in to our circumstances and we operate out of our circumstances. Instead of saying, God created this big world. He created me with the means and ability. There is a scripture that says that he gives us the power to give wealth. He gives us the power. We keep waiting on God to do stuff when he said, I've given you the power. So if you never utilize the power, some things don't get done. If you never speak it, some things don't get done. If you never get up and move, some things just don't get done. Even though he has laid it out and is there already, some things don't get done because you don't get up and do. He said, be doers of the word and not hearers only. So when he gives us the ability to do, so if he said, I've given you the power to give wealth, the power is in you to get well. Well, sometimes we want to sit and say, well, God is going to do it. We sound holy. We sound righteous because we say God. But then God is sitting there saying, but I gave you the power. You get up and go apply for the job. You get up and go to the job. But you rely on me to point you in the direction and give you how to do but you don't want got to get up so that i can work the how i can't work the how if you don't get up you understand what i'm saying so here in our culture connection it says some people are richer than they realize and it's speaking of this person who, who was stan lee walker and he's one of these people he had was his father was educated he's educated his father was a wealthy shipbuilder in england and then his father passed away and half of his $8 million inheritance in 1950. So you can imagine if it was in 1950, what it, what it would be worth today. It was due to each of his two sons. He had two sons, okay? So that means, so if you just split it up 50, 50, 4 million, 4 million, how many can do something with 4 million? You know, can you do something with four million? All right, all right, all right. That's not some chump change. We we can work for four million. Okay, I can work five. I I, I can work five. I just I can work five thousand. <laughs> Thank you. Just just give me five thousand. I can work for five thousand. You know. But Stanley was now a millionaire from England, living in Chicago. But he was not staying in a luxury condo on the magnificent mile when the people went out searching for him to let him know about his inheritance okay they heard this is sad they heard he was sleeping off his alcohol in cheap hotels and on the curbs in chicago that that's the sad part and that's what hurts our hearts you know when you see people and it's like some things wasn't necessary but you went the wrong direction pastor mentions that because of a decision because of decision we tell our children i know i, I would always tell tell my my daughter and our, our my nephews and stuff one bad decision you got to you got to pay attention to all your decisions you got to pay attention to all of them because you just won just one bad one will mess your life up. I'm not saying mistakes. You're going to make mistakes because you're you're learning how to be adults. You're moving into adulthood. You're going to, we all have made mistakes. But we're talking about decisions because what happens is God will lay out life and death, good and bad. He says, bring them up in the way they should go. So there is a way that should be. So you are well aware. So when you make decisions and choose that I'm going to just go this way, you need to pay attention to the decisions that you make because some decisions can have an effect that you can't get out of. God is able, but he allows free will. And we're going to see that further into the lesson. And so it says here that when they finally found him, he was dead. 
lying in a doorway on a cold autumn night. He did not have to live that way or die that way. He either did not know about his inheritance or he did not care. He did not care. And, and that's the sad part. Not knowing about the inheritance mean. So see, you got two, two factors here. So sometimes addictions and things like that takes away that sense of caring and things like that from you. You understand what I'm saying? Because your main, you know, from what I'm told, the main, the main object of your of desire, everything is about getting the next fix or getting the next drink or, or whatever that addiction is. Even shoppers, there's shopping addictions getting the next deal, sell, getting the next, you know, sale, you know, or something like that. So whatever it is, your focus is on that. So then uh, uh, not knowing about the inheritance means you was not in contact with your father. Means you didn't keep up with your father or your brother. You, you just, you, you went off on your way and didn't look back. So you didn't know he had died. Had you known his lifestyle and that he died, you would have known something must be coming to me. So both scenarios was, was not good. But here it says he didn't know or he didn't care because he didn't have to live that way. He, he didn't. Your father may not be a wealthy shipbuilder ready to leave you $4 million, but our Heavenly Father built the universe with just his words. Just his words. One word from God can do amazing things. It can change your life. One word. One word. I've had the, the one word experiences. And I am telling you, one word from God makes a difference in your life. It will transform your life. One word. Praise God. It says here throughout the New Testament, we open the bank statement to realize just how rich we are. God has showered us with his kindness. He has justified us, declared us righteous in his Holy Spirit. He has shown us mercy, washed us, renewed us, and saved us from death to life. These, this is everything that we have. We have eternal life in Christ. But do we realize it? Do we realize that his body is mercy? Do we realize about what he has washed away? If we remember where we came from, we realize what he has washed away, what he has renewed in us. It say, even if you die a pauper without enough nickels to exchange for a dime, when you are born again, you become an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. We realize, I mean, I'm sorry, we really are richer than we realize. And we really are. We, we really are people of God. We just got to walk in it. We, we got we to gotta remember. And he'll bring all things to our remembrance. You know, it seems like, you know, we... we we're challenged on every side, but that's the devil wanting to snatch it from us. That's the devil coming through and trying to, to, to change our minds and trying to give up on God and, and all of that. But when the reality, when we realize what we have in him and we keep affirming the word in our lives, that's the thing that keeps resisting the enemy. The word of God is what resists the enemy. We have no power to resist the enemy. We put the word on the enemy, and we allow that to do its job. Um, our outline, we have three, three sections here, and it says the kindness and the love of God. He saved us, and we are justified by the grace of God. And like I said, we talked about the amazing grace last week, and this is going to reaffirm that amazing grace and what it has done for us. Contemplating the topic, it says the will to live and the struggle for survival are central to the human condition 
and are acted upon in the most challenging of life's circumstances. That, that's, we, we're talking about uh, uh, um, life, the struggle. It says, in times of danger and loss, the heart is moved and inspired by the courageous decisions and selfless acts of men and women on behalf of others. Such examples of concern for the plight of fellow travelers on this road of life demonstrate that even the simplest acts of love can change the lives and futures of all those involved. That's what the lesson is going to show us. The simplest act. And nothing God has done is simple. Nothing. We don't put it in sim we don't put it in a state of it's just simple, it's just nothing. Anybody could have done it. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. It's just the simple, all everything he did came down to the simple fact that he loved us. That's what we're talking about. It's the simple fact of Love is the simple fact that he loved us. Going further into searching the scriptures is talking about the kindness and the love of God. And it says God's love is powerful. And we can attest to that because just him dying on the cross, the things that he went through for mankind shows his love. We sing this song, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. And then they talked about how the story didn't end right there. He got up and sent back the comforter because he did not want to leave us comfortless. He wanted us to have the same power that he exhibited on earth. Okay? He wanted us to have the same power. And he said, greater works will we do when we receive that power. That's why every believer needs to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Because that and only that causes you to be a true witness. A witness is, I, I, I watched Judge Maybelline, and at the beginning of her show, uh, it just came to mind that she said, um, um, when she's telling people about their purpose for coming to court, she said, I only want to hear what you've seen and what you've heard. I mean, you know, what you've experienced. Because if you're telling me what he said, she said over there, that's not a true witness. That becomes hearsay. And so God don't want us to be just, just the hearsay people. He want us to talk and be witnesses of him. That's why he said, when we receive the Holy Ghost, we're going to be witnesses of him because we have him on the inside and we can talk about what we have on the inside. We can talk about what he does and who he is when he's inside. Mm-hmm. Now, one, one thing is uh, uh, we believe, see, the, uh, the belief has to come. The belief comes first before being saved. You believe on Jesus. He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. So you believe on him. You believe in the word of God. You believe in what he has said. Now, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you start speaking of what is what he is operating through you. You can't testify of the Pentecost experience, a personal Pentecost experience when you have not had one. You understand what I'm saying? It is hard for you. You can talk about the scriptures and you can describe what the scriptures say. 
because you believe the word of God is the word of God. You believe that. But as a true witness, a witness is an experience, a person that has firsthand knowledge. That is the witness that he is talking about when he says, you shall be witnesses of, of me when you receive this power. Now, I uh, have an experience, me myself laying hands and somebody's risen from the dead, me, me personally, I believe that he is done. I've seen and I've heard the miracles. So when I'm testifying of these miracles, I've heard it. So that, because the scripture said it, then another witness came and said it, then I believe it. And that witness is witnessing what they've seen and did. But we have still witnessed firsthand the power of the Holy Ghost. We've I, I, we've had pastors in our whole, just from our foundation all the way up till now. We've seen God work. We've seen the prophecies. It's prophesied and it happens. This has happened. But then when the, when, when in Acts, when it said, you shall receive power, he's telling you what you're going to do. You are going to do greater works. You are going to be able to experience the same level of you can lay hands on the sick and they recover. That is an experience that you will have and you can witness to. We, we can, we can uh, uh, share what the word of God says. We can, we can talk about it. And I can still witness to what I've seen. You understand what I'm saying? He wants us to witness what you've experienced because power what you say is going to come from a place of power is, is that did that did that uh lay it out a little bit more okay i just wanted to make sure i was a little bit clear evangelist i saw your hand That's a good one, yes. Sometimes we're interchanging the words. Mm -hmm. this, this is regular conversation. All you know, John, yeah, no, in reality, you know us, John. Right. You don't even know, no, John. John. Mm -hmm. Unless you really have some real relationship or what time I come up with. Mm -hmm. Then you can kind of say, use the terminology, yes, I know John. But you don't know of John. Mm -hmm. I don't know John, but I know of him. Mm -hmm. yeah, so sometimes people know of God. They don't really know God. Paul said that I may know him. Right. Now you can ready to go to a whole other level of knowing him in the power of his power. That right. You're going to meet different places and you're going to walk where he walked, where he walked. That's it. Not necessarily in Jerusalem, but through the life. Mm -hmm. Experiencing some of the same rejection and all of the
say word. That's what we just okay, said. Don't check the whole time. That's the word. word. That's the word. And unlock those bars of their mind. Mm -hmm. And you have now set that captivity mentally. There are the spirit behind it. So when we read it, we are sometimes in different instances doing exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. Praise God for that. That and that's that's why we need the Holy Ghost because. What happens is he reveals these things to our minds. He he lets you know that this is this is how I want you to operate. This this is how you're operating, and and that's why we need the power because uh, we are not we're not able to do anything of ourselves. I'm gonna keep saying that. I'm gonna keep saying that. There's nothing we do of ourselves. There's nothing we need the Holy Ghost. We can be good people all day long, but when God comes back with his spirit, when he cracks the sky, when it's time, and see, a lot of times we, we are living to live again. <clears throat> we have eternal life when we receive the Holy Ghost. So eternal life is there. It, we cross into another realm and another dimension when we pass away. But I'm walking in eternity now. How I operate details where I'm going to spend it. Ah, glory to God. How I live today tells me where I'm going to spend it. But I'm walking in it now. When he filled me with the Holy Ghost, he has given me eternal life. So I need to operate here. See, the power is for here and what's going to go, what the Bishop Wade used to always say, who's going down in the grave with you? Because that's what's going to get you up. How you lay is how you rise. Glory to God. And so we, we live to live again. Hallelujah. But we are not living dying. Let, let's put it that way. I'm saved so that I can help you. I got to help you. I got to help you. I'm not going to just sit here to die. Because I just want to be in heaven. That's not what he wants. Ah, glory to God. Hey, God, I'm already ready for eternal life. That's why I stay in a zone of repentance to make sure I'm clean. Because I don't know when he'll snatch it away. Hallelujah. Rapture, guess what? It's is when if I sometimes they go in a house and they find someone. We just lost a cousin. They just went there and he was already gone. You, you, Sometimes it's just you go to sleep and you just are crossed over into eternity. The devil used to have me thinking, and this sounds really foolish, and I, I, and I know, but that's how he had me thinking foolishly. And he used to have me thinking when I, when I was real young and, you know, didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. And we were so conscious of the Holy Ghost, how to receive and allow it to just come in, but we were so conscious of it. And so I, I, you know, you look around, the devil just had me thinking I was gonna hear the boom, I was gonna hear him on his way, and then I was gonna be able to do something and, and receive it that fast and, and all that. The Bible says a twinkling of an eye. So I kept looking for the signs that, you know, that's why you get scared when you're thunder, when you're not in the right standing. You scared of thunder, you scared of big booms when you are conscious of his coming. You're conscious of it, okay? You haven't received it, but you conscious that it's gonna happen. See, see, I'm a, I was a believer. See, 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 we, we tend to negate the believer, but guess what? You can't receive the Holy Ghost if you don't believe it. So we as believers got to get to that next realm. We got to get to that next level. You understand what I'm saying? So I was in the state of believing. I just wasn't a receiver. All right. I had to go to the next level of receiving what I believed. Yeah. And the devil will camouflage things and, and have you living this life of constant 
I, I got a chance. I, I can do, I can be quick. I, I, I can be, but it said twinkling of an eye. So therefore, my rapture being a twinkling of an eye, whether it be by the clouds, he come and crack the sky, or if it be by way of the grave, I'm already preparing myself to rise with him. Because as you lie, is how you rise. You know, a lot of times in funerals, people try to put people in heaven. They put people in hell. They, they just put people. That is not our place because they make the decision. How you lie is how you're going to rise. So that's therefore at a funeral, we're talking to the ones that remain. Because you may have, but now you may have someone that's conscious of the fact that this is coming. This is going to happen. No, it don't feel good. I'm here to comfort your heart. But you got a chance to be ready for this time. Yes. And it's going to happen. He's going to come. Yes. But I want to be saved. But guess what? We had a Bible school, a Bible class lesson. I'm saved to be saved. I'm saved today to be saved when he comes. Hallelujah! To be saved from hell and damnation. That's why I'm saved. I'm saved to be saved from that. Ah, glory to God. I'm saved to, to be an encouragement to you. I'm saved to allow the power of the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you to help snatch you out the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because we are helpers one to another. Glory to God. And that's why we come together to edify each other, to let you know. That's why you have to have it, because that's the witness. I'm a witness that Pentecost is real. Glory to God. I know of it. I knew of it before I got it. I believed it. And that's what made me want it. Because I believed it. Because I heard the testimonies of the saints. I heard the testimonies of the apostles. I read it. I read it, and the scriptures are inspired by God, and they wrote it because God gave it to them. So therefore, I opened my mind to what I heard. Because guess where faith came from? It came from what I heard. But in order for me to be the witness that he needed, so I can tell you, so you can hear it, I had to experience Pentecost for myself. That's why I know Pentecost is real. Because tongues are real. The Holy Ghost speaking expressly is real. The Holy Ghost praying for you is real. All of that is real, but I had to become a receiver. I had to get out of my own head. I had y'all done heard my testimony. I was a Cornelia lad. So I had to get out of my own head and become the receiver of whatever he had to offer. Not on my terms. A lot of times we doing it on our terms because we have judged ourselves and we have graded ourselves and we have deemed ourselves holy. And we're in the lesson. We deemed ourselves a certain way. And so God can't penetrate because we've already deemed ourselves. And so God can't let us know who we really are and what we really look like to him. So when I had to get to the place of how do I look to you? What do you see? Help me to see me how you see me. Then I can become a receiver because I let all that go. I'm not the best judge of me because I didn't create me. I don't know my heart because the only one knows my heart is God because he's the creator of my heart. Ha, ah, ah. ha. So, so that's why the scripture is so real to me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Because what the things that I meditate on, Lord, I need it to be pleasing. Don't let my humanity and my flesh get in the way of my meditation so that you will be pleased and you are able to operate fully 
and complete in my life. That's when I'm made perfect because I'm fully and completely yielded and you are able to operate. That's the perfection that he's trying to get you to. Not that you're never going to make mistakes. Not that you're not human. But he wants you complete in him. That's what he wants. And guess what? We're able to be that way because he's provided salvation. And guess where it all started? It started with love. It started with love. And we're going to move through the lesson. We're, we're already in the lesson because we're talking about the love of God and being saved. It said Jesus demonstrated his love to one and all, showing the world what he thinks of the human race. And then it goes down. Um, it said God saved us, Paul told Titus. And we're looking at, and I, that's why I said the lesson text is going to be broken down within this, these outlines here. Uh, you say deliverance and escape from the plight and the bondage of sin is the heart of the meaning of the word salvation. And we know saved is talking about being rescued, being set free. That's why we say saved to be saved. You know, a lot, a lot of people get saved and then something, they, they, they still got to be delivered in certain things. You know, uh, 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 yeah, uh, let's just use the simple thing of eating too much. You know, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? That everything is not a sin, but you need to be because it could be a weight. The Bible said there are weights and there are sins. We need to get the weights out of our way because that holds us down and that drags us along. It drags us. So here it said the sacrificial death of Christ can deliver us from the bondage of sin leashed upon humanity by Adam's transgression. And we understand that. We understand the reason we are even in this. Because I believe, just by looking at the scriptures that it says he told them to be fruitful and multiply, that it probably, we, the, the fruitful and the multiply would have still probably happened. You understand what I'm saying? Because he wanted them to multiply. You understand what I'm saying? He wanted them to multiply. But because of sin, there's a way now that's being multiplied. And then when we all are born, we're born into sin because of what happened in the garden. We probably could have been born into the garden of Eden. We probably could have been born into a life of, oh, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, had they not done what they done, you know, and I'm that's just the, the book of Phyllis. You know, we we could <laughs> we probably could have been sitting in here just praising. God. It would just been a perpetual praising God, praising God, and just living our lives praising God for, because we all would have had relationship with Him. His whole creation would have been just in right standing and in relationship, and we are already be in eternal life heaven. You, you understand what I'm saying? But because of sin, here we are. Okay? We all know that. That Adam and Eve is. <laughs> you know, though, it, you know, God has it that time already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and no, no. It, it's whatever, you know, to say, uh, 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 um, as it is in heaven, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, you know, he, he, he glorifies it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. And never seen. He said, "You all can be in Him, but we can be heaven and be in But He got that already. He wants something like us that wants Him and have the choice, right? The will of choosing Him over mm -hmm. in spite of right. See, I don't want you to just be nice to me because you have no choice with this creation. Right. I want you to Yes. That's relationship. Yes. So that's the one thing man has of all his creation. He has a choice. He has absolutely given us that choice. Mm -hmm. You know, that's different from an angel. They they created to do an angel. Mm -hmm. Angels are different. But that's why you want to say, well, let me just say something because the devil did 
That's what I was just getting ready to say. That I was just getting ready to throw that out there. Food for yeah. thought. Food for thought. Some angels have some choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that uh, they have free will. Yeah. Yes. That was mm -hmm. before the foundation of the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. them to return the effort not return on the fact that I tip for tat right. you know I want you to choose me and give me that same effort of love that I took my time to give you I I, 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 I love that uh, uh, so uh, it said God's love is a soul antidote to sin okay and he know and we all know he loves the sinner so when we start picking out sins and saying, oh, that one is too bad, that one is too bad, in God's eyes, sin is sin. And the sinner, the one that sins, 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 and keep on sinning, he still loves them. But they're making a choice. He loves all of us. He died for the sins of the whole world. We are part of the world. But he wants us to choose to come out of the life of sin to be delivered and set free from the bondage of sin. That's what we are saved from the bondage of sin. We're, we're not in bondage to sin anymore. Now it's a choice when we let it rule and we let it creep back in and we still touching it and things like that. That's our choice. But when he saves us, he completely removes the bondage of the sin. Now it's up to us to continue to affirm the word, which we talked about earlier, in order to resist the enemy that keeps trying to remind us of what he delivered us from. He keeps trying to remind us and put back on us and put us back in a place where we've been delivered from. And sometimes we are not strong enough to resist that and we end up because it's the, the power of temptation is great. And I won't deny that with anybody and anything. But because of the grace of God, when we believe the word of God the way we need to, and we have faith that God is a keeper, we will choose him. And then because he makes the way of escape, yeah. he will say, that's your way of escape. Use it. And it's up to us to use it. Now, free will. It's up to us to use the way of escape. It says here, God's kindness and love are revealed to all men through Jesus Christ. And it talked about the blood of Jesus, and it symbolizes uh, uh, the, 
The, the blood that Jesus shed symbolized in the sacrifices in the temple of the Old Testament. It was, was shed to purge our sins. That is the sins of the whole world. And we understand that how they used the blood on the sacrifices in the Old Testament and how Jesus had to come because there was no pure. There was no one there was no one uh, 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 able. There's no one available. There's no one worthy. Okay? And he says here, God himself, Luke declared, purchased the church with his own blood. So he had to use his own blood. And so it's going down and saying that he come, God commended his love. God commended his love toward us. Okay, that in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. He did it while we was yet sinners. He didn't wait for us to get right. And that's why we try to tell people. Uh, a lot of times when, we, when we're doing an altar call or when we're ministering or when we uh, are, are, are talking to, to individuals. And, okay, I'm going to come to church. I got to get this straight. I got to get this straight. Uh, you know, I got to fix this. I got to fix that. I got to buy me another wardrobe of clothes. I got to, I gotta, you know, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, stop drinking first and then I'm going to come to church. I'm going to stop doing this and then I'm coming to church. The scripture, if we, 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 if we get to the part and, and embrace the part that says, while we were yet sinners. He never told us to go be straight and come back. The one thing he did tell us to do is repent. But there's also a scripture that says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So the day you hear his voice, repent and obey. Repent and obey. I'm going to take care of all the other stuff. But that's the devil trying to get this. That's a camouflage. That I'm going to get it straight. And I'm going to try to live right. And I'm going to try to do this. And I'm going to try to do that. And then... I'm going to come to God. Why do we need God? If we're going to get it right, if we're going to give it our addiction, if we're going to do this, if we're going to do that, then we come to God. Look look at the, it, it's, you know, because it's just a, 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 a revelation that I have, it seems simple. See, in earlier in the scripture, in, in, the, in the lesson, we said the simplicity. It is simple. It's just that it is that simple. We can't fix it. It's up to God. God is the only one that can fix it. But we bring all this and yield it to the one that can fix it. And guess what? The devil's going to try to make you think it's not done. He's going to try to make you think it's extra hard. And guess what? It feels that way because he deals with our five senses. We talked about that in Bible class. He deals with our five senses to make us feel taste, see the difficulties. But when we tap into the spirit realm, remember, we got a whole nother realm that we got to got to understand and tap into. That is the spirit realm. With the spirit, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We got to get our minds into the spirit and see it, how God is doing. He said, I'm moving in the spirit. I am a spirit. And when I come in you, it's the spirit of me coming in you. You may not feel, you know, you wait to see, oh, I'm going to feel this. I'm going to feel that. God will just show up. Hallelujah suddenly and take control of that tongue and you just like oh I can't control oh I, I'm waiting for us to get to the can't help it Hallelujah. I know what it looked like okay I, 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 I'm just gonna tell you I, I, I know what it looked like see see some people talk about they 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 heard of our founder and that's okay I remember our founder I mean see I'm a witness <laughs> I'm a witness from the back I wasn't here when it was founded, okay? I wasn't here when it was founded, all right? But I remember her before yeah. she passed on. I thank God that I was able to be under her. So I experienced and I saw yeah. a lot. I saw the can't help us. I saw the anointing fall on people yeah. as they come in the door. And they don't even know what they feel. All they know is they want to raise their hand. Yeah. I'm waiting for God to saturate this place. I'm waiting. 
waiting for a revival to break out where people just can't help it and their hearts start changing right in the middle of it. They thought they had to go prepare and do this and God said, me now, now, I'm a suddenly God. I'm a God that will do it right now. I will touch you right now. Where is your heart? I got the Holy Ghost saying, okay, Lord. Because he said, if you get your mind on me right now, right now, I'm going to do it for you right now. And I said, okay, Lord. I didn't have time to think of the right holy words. I have to just yield the way I, all I knew was, okay, Lord. Once I said, okay, Lord, oh, my God, I stepped into the spirit realm. See, the natural man can't step into the spirit realm. You got to allow the Lord to transform your mind and move your mind into the spirit realm. You got to always deny what I'm talking about. You got to always say, oh, well, that's her. You got to always push it off on somebody else because you haven't tapped into the spirit realm. When you tap into the spirit realm, you will be a witness. You can't tell a witness what they saw. You can't tell a witness what they know. You can't change a witness mind. Guess what? Yes, the defense attorney comes through and tries to defend and try to say the witness didn't see this, the witness didn't feel this, the witness didn't hear this. They try to come. But when the witness know what they know, I hear what you're trying to say, but I know. And you can't take what I know. You can't take the fact that I understand moving into the spirit realm. Oh God, I, I just, I, I, I'm just looking for it because that's the, that's the atmosphere God wants to work in. That is the atmosphere He will do wondrous work. That is the atmosphere He wants us to be used to, not just an occasional. I tapped it a year ago. I tell, he, that's where he gets the most glory. That's where he's able to unleash those things that when we say that he will raise the dead and he will do this. He is ready to pour out his spirit because that's his promise upon all flesh. He wants you to be have the gifts of the spirit. But he's not going to give you all those gifts without the one gift that's afforded to everybody. The Holy Ghost is the gift for everyone. Then he sees you are capable of prophesying, so I'm going to pour the prophecy gift on you. You are, you are gifted with laying hands. I'm going to pour that one on you. We all can lay hands. But there's a gift of it, and we're not going to go into that. There are special gifts that he will anoint you with. Hallelujah! Because it's all edifying the body of Christ. He'll call you to be a teacher. He'll call you to be a preacher. He'll call you to be a bishop. He will bring that to fruition. But he needs you to have his one true gift. And that's the Holy Ghost. To make all of these other ones functional. Oh. But I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. That you can step from this earthly realm and this natural realm into the spirit realm. That elbow shot. Hallelujah. We keep talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And we are operating for the kingdom of God. We are here in business for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And we cannot fulfill our purpose in this earthly realm. We got to get our minds kingdom minded. We got to tap into the spirit. But our first experience is receiving the Holy Ghost. That's how you open the door. That's how you enter. Uh, yeah. And it is nothing. And then I move further. Uh, we end the lesson. But because of his love, it says his love is emphatic. 
It's his love that's demonstrated. He demonstrated all this he did. He demonstrated it. It says here the amazing aspect of his demonstration of kindness toward all his people is that his death became substitutionary. See, see, remember, we, we just talked about the people that want to get it straight and only got a few more minutes. Get it straight, get it straight, get it straight before you do that. But he substituted himself for us. It said on be it is on our behalf he died. He took our place. The guiltless for the guilty, Christ died for us. He substituted himself for us. We got to remember while we were yet sinners. Let's we're gonna walk that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we are ministering, when we are witnessing, and people start saying that, okay, I'm, I'm going to get it straight, and then I'm going to come. Say, but while you were yet a sinner, he didn't tell you to get it straight. He didn't wait to go to the cross when you got it straight. He went to the cross and shed his blood while you were yet a sinner. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah, and it says here in Isaiah, he did all this on behalf of. All of this is on behalf of. It says, surely he hath borne our griefs. He bared them. He bare our griefs. And he carried our sorrows. He carried them. Hallelujah. We all had grief and sorrow because we are human. And guess what Jesus did to me? Because he cried. Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible is he wept. And I still, it came to my mind, Lord, you wept, but you knew you was going to raise him up. You knew he was gone. You told them he was sleeping. You told, you told them he's just sleeping. Okay? But before you demonstrated, you wept. It hurt you. Even though you knew you were going to raise him. You were going to raise him. So why are you crying? He's, why are you crying? If I knew that my mom wasn't going to be, leave us, if I knew that I can, that God was just going to pick her up, there wouldn't have been no crying. Because I'm like, okay, in the next minute she's coming back. You understand what I'm saying? So why am I going to cry for that? But guess what? He felt all of our infirmities. He had to experience everything we've experienced. And so that sorrow and that grief, that was part of the experience so that he would know what you feel like. Yes. How you feeling is not a bad thing. We just got to understand he had borne, bare our griefs, and he carried our sorrows. Woo! So he understand when we have a tear. Thank you. He let himself cry and feel. No, he was going to do now. He let himself feel. That's a God that demonstrated his love. He demonstrated Ah, and I'm, I'm going further. It said, we can know his love and kindness. Ah, it said, free will allows, and we talked about that, that all may live apart from the gospel and the love of their creator, but God loves them all. We talked about that. That is that choice part. And here in, this, in the middle of it, it said, interestingly, some have compared God's love to a flawless diamond or what it was known to early diamond traders as the diamond of the first water, referring to its purity. God's goodness can work within the conscience and the mind of the vilest sinner yet remain pure. That's why he had to do it, because of the pureness of his blood and the pureness of his love. He didn't have no isms. He didn't have no respect to person. He didn't, he said the whole world. The scripture we learned as a kid, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. What was the rest of it? That whosoever believe shall believe in, continue to believe. Just because he filled me with the Holy Ghost and I'm saved today, I can backslide tomorrow because of my free will. 
I'm not preaching or teaching nothing that says once saved, always saved. He's married to the backslider. The scripture says that. But if when your free will says, I choose to leave him, he didn't leave you. He kept his word. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You he he sealed us. Can't nobody pluck him, pluck you out of his hands. He said that. But the scripture said, he that believeth. Right. And you got to understand the ETH. The ETH is continue to believe. Because tomorrow you stop believing in him and choose to turn away from him. He's telling you, the devil didn't pluck you out. You jumped out of my hands. You walked out of my hands. You walked away from me. You chose. I didn't let you go. You let go. So I wanted you to see that you have free will from the beginning to the end. It says here, um, I'm moving on. And I'm, I'm trying to move a little faster because my time is, is going down. Here it says, remember the light can move anywhere or everywhere, including to the depth of the sewer and yet remain undefiled. Ah. Did y'all hear that by light? Did y'all hear that about the light? Ah. The light can go anywhere. Y'all have seen the people go, uh, uh, and my brother's into the, the documentaries on the Titanic. You know, they had a light down there searching the Titanic and trying to pull up some of the, the ruins and then some of the values. There was a light down there. They had the underwater light, the undersea light. There is a light. But guess what? That light remained undefiled. It's shining through all that darkness. Darkness could not stop that light from shining. Mm, mm, mm. The devil can't do nothing to stop your light from shining. You get that light turned on and you keep that light turned on by affirming the word of God, by hiding the word of God in your heart, by constantly speaking the word, constantly speak the word. Even when you don't feel the word, speak what God speaks, say what God said, because we are tapping into the spirit realm. Remember, it's being done in the spirit. So sometimes it's not manifested. And God got his reasons sometimes for allowing time to pass. But in his, in his realm, time hasn't passed at all. Remember, his realm, you know, Pastor, you know, when he hits on that, in time, out of time, that I'll be like, oh, oh, oh I'm loving that. But anyway, when he talks about, about God stepping out of time, and then he stepped back in time and all that kind of stuff. We're in time. We're in time. So when we're tapping into the spirit and we wait for the manifestation, he's like, I've done it already. It's going to be manifested. But for me, time hasn't passed. But then I was listening to someone. Uh, um, on the TV the other day, and he's talking about, you know, because I've been listening to It's Done Already. And that, that's a love, that's an awesome teaching by Womack, Andrew oh, Womack, yeah. that by God's guy, he's done it already. And so, but the, uh, when he was, he was talking about uh, Daniel, when, when in Daniel, when he said that it's already, he said it was two, and, 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 and we all know there was two prayers. One, one was answered immediately, and the other one was held up. And then he he let them know that it was it was held up because the was that right held it up. It wasn't that I hadn't done it. It wasn't that I hadn't heard you. I heard you when you first spoke. See, that's what we got to remember is he heard us when we first asked. You understand what I'm saying? But we don't know what's fighting it in the spirit. You understand what I'm saying? And then. Guess what? He's let sometimes things, he got to teach us some things. He got to teach us something about waiting. He got to teach us something. Just make sure, as Bishop Wade always say, there's no cat on your line where the prayer can't even be proof. If you ain't living like you're supposed to be living, if you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing, you may have a cat. So check yourself 
But when you know you've done all and you believe in God, now we in the spirit realm saying, okay, God, there must be something that you're trying to teach me or you want me to wait, but I'm going to wait. I, I'm, I'm going to wait on you. And, and that's telling my flesh. See the, see, the thing is, I command my flesh to wait. I command my mind to get on one accord with the spirit. I command my members to get in one accord and to line up. Guess what? Is it easy? No. Did he say it was going to be easy all the time? No. It is not always easy to wrestle with this flesh, to wrestle with temptation. But when we yield it to God, he will come along and make it easier. We got to get our mind. It's a mindset. And I know Job didn't see anything he was going through easy. Nothing. Nothing Job went through was easy. Nothing, 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 nothing. Hallelujah. Going further, he saved us. And I'm just going to touch on some things. It says the nature of the bondage of sin is such that we could not save ourselves. And we know nature is the, the uh, characteristics of sin, the characteristics of that bondage. We couldn't do it ourselves. Remember the, the stanza, remember the phrase, while we were yet sinners, okay? Mm -hmm. We couldn't do it. We could not do it. It said from the standpoint, from the judicial standpoint, we were guilty. And you know, the standpoint is the point of view that we're at right now. From this point of view, we're guilty. We should be in prison. And we understand all of that. We, we, we talked about all of that. It said the obedience to the gospel gave us access to what God's love provided for all. And we cannot get around obedience because there are instructions to everything in this word, to obtaining things from God. Now, we're not saying that he ain't already done it. He already shed his blood. He already provided for salvation. Now he gave us some instructions. Now, the word obedience comes into the following of the instructions to obtain the promise. There's an obedience that goes with that. We are not saved by our own righteous deeds. And we talked about that. There's nothing we can do. There, 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 there's nothing that we can do other than be obedient. And then what, what, what happens in obedience, we realize that we are nothing of ourselves anyway. Because obedience takes humility. Obedience takes us getting out of ourselves. Obedience takes us in saying, I believe you with everything I got, and I'm going to walk the walk you set before me. I'm going to follow the instructions you set before me. I don't understand it. I don't know it, but I'm just going to follow it. With everything, not holding nothing back. And there's a song, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Ah, And so it says, God's favor has always accompanied righteousness okay just as it did when noah found favor with god he had a relationship and it said that he was labeled and i'm using the term label he had become a preacher of righteousness he had to be because he preached so long and he was the eighth one noah was the eighth one saved he had got everybody in you know how you standing at the door, you're the one called to stand at the door. Everybody in there saved, all seven, and then you go in. And the door is closed, it's shut. Noah was the eighth one. Glory to God. And, and, and it said, yet it is equally crucial to recognize that self-righteousness, good deeds, and all are the, are the rest. And all the rest are inadequate to save anyone to merit salvation. Ah, we cannot take ourselves and extricate ourselves from sin or its consequences. Our nature itself won't, just won't allow it. Our nature has to be changed. We have to be born again. Because that's what gives us the new nature. That's what presents the new man. Because the old man is subject to the old things. 
So we have to be buried. And so he's getting ready to go there. We are saved according to his mercy. And we talked about the grace last week. And it said, because of this, uh, it said, Paul told the young Titus that we are not saved because of our own righteousness, because of his mercy. It says, it is that simple. We talked about the simplicity of it earlier. God is justified in his patient love of the lost. We are saved due to God's unfathomable love and mercy. Uh, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. That, 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 and that's how we want to operate. We're supposed to have the love of God. We should be saying, we should be utilizing loving kindness to draw. They should see that same loving kindness that God displayed. They should see it coming from us. And we need to pay attention when our humanity starts stepping over all of that. When our human fact factors and our flesh start stepping over and hiding the love of God because it's just us. It's just me. I just do this. That's just me. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. But when me start getting in the way of God's love being displayed, then it's in the wrong place. You need to put that down and start uh, 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 flowing in the spirit. You need to check yourself. Because too much of me is in the way of God. And he will have no other God before him. Okay? We are saved through the washing of regeneration. This is this is breaking down, and I've got, uh, let me give five, about five more minutes. The washing to which Paul referred to in, in Titus 3 and 5 has to do with the water of baptism. And he spoke some, sim, uh, similarity in Acts when he commanded baptism in the name of Jesus. He said, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. There is a parallel preference, reference where Jesus himself compared spiritual or new birth with natural birth. Jesus concluded, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Here he uses precise grammar to link water or baptism and spirit as two elements in one birth. And that comes from John 3 and 5. The washing of regeneration is yet another linking of baptism to salvation. Okay. Jesus also said emphatically, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Okay, and what this section is doing is linking the washing of regeneration to the baptism. It's giving you the scripture backing to show that how necessary baptism is. Okay, as when Paul spoke of Christ, we are buried with him by baptism. Okay, again, highlighting the element of water in the experience of the new birth salvation. And you're going to see that through the gospel and how all of this, how all of the repentance, the baptism, the infilling tie into the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We are saved through the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It said, Paul told us in Titus 3 and 5, you are saved by two elements, first washing and then the Holy Ghost. This is the pattern in the book of Acts and the Pentecostal experience. And the thing that we have to recognize is if everybody agreed that the church was born in Acts. Acts is the acts of the apostles. The acts of after the church was born, what were the acts that followed? What did they do? Acts is action. What did, what happened? What did they do? Birth of the church. So if we got the birth of the church, then we cannot deny the infilling of the Holy Ghost. If we are saying we are the church. Yeah, yeah. We can't separate the two. If we believe the Pentecost, then we got to believe the message on Pentecost. Which says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can't separate it. I get it, you, you, but you can't separate it, okay? We actualize the experience 
and experience the gospel of death, burial, and resurrection in repentance, baptism, and the infilling of the spirit. New birth, renewal, new life results from the new man arising from the death of the old man in a genuine repentance. These elements are more than outward or mere sacramental symbols. We have people that describe the baptism. It's just an outward symbol of, of, you know, what Jesus did. And I don't have a problem with that. But it's not just that. It's not just that. Because that is the physical. We got to get into that spiritual realm where Jesus is. Yeah. Uh, it's more than that. They are vital and thrilling. Uh -huh. and, and the reason you can say thrilling is because of being a witness. You can't say there are rides that's that magic mountain. I used to be a thrill ride seeker. I loved all those rides. So I know they were thrilling because I rode them. But the ones they got today, I done grew out of those. I take your word for it, how thrilling they are. But you can keep it. I don't want to witness that. So I choose not to witness that three. Okay? <laughs> but I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I just tell, tell my daughter that my mama can't watch you ride those no more. You got to do that with Uncle Troy. <laughs> I mean, just hit him with Uncle Troy. Yo, Uncle Troy take you out there and all those thrilling things. And I think he done grew out of them now. <laughs> <laughs> A thrill, we take your word for it. But to, to say that these things are thrilling elements of the new life of the gospel and its saving and strengthening power within the believer is because of an experience. Pentecost is an experience. Seek for the experience. If you don't get nothing else, seek for Seek it until you get it. Don't don't say, oh, I didn't get it today, so I ain't gonna keep trying. Keep trying until you get it. Because God's gonna let you know that one thing that's between you and him that's blocking it. That one thing, it could be just one thing. You could have your 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 children in front of you too much. You could love your children so much until they're between you and God, and he'll tell you, move your children. And you say, okay, God. Boom! Seek it until you get it because it is a thrilling Ooh. element. Thrilling, thrilling. Don't let go. Who was that? And I, I and forgive me because I'm I'm at my five minutes. Who was that that kept kept wrestling with the angel? Kept wrestling, kept wrestling, and I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not going to let you go until you do it. I'm not going to let you go. And guess what? He held on until his name was changed. He held on. And his name was changed. Glory to God. Hold on. Seek until. Because I'm a witness that it exists. I'm a witness that is real. I'm a witness that is thrilling. I'm a witness that is vital to this walk. Ah, the baptism of the spirit refers to the supernatural infilling of the believer within the initial sign and outward evidence of speaking in other tongues. And guess what? You're going to keep fighting me on it. And you're going to keep saying, it's not, I don't need all that. It don't take all that. You will continue to do that until you tap into the spirit realm. Right. But because I'm a witness, I'm just going to let you say it. But I don't have to. You, you, you're not doing it like in court. The defense trying to change my mind. You can't do that. You can't do that. Thank you. I'm a shooter because I'm a witness. I'm a first-hand witness. I have seen and experienced. I believed it before I got it, and I know it once I got it. I know it exists, but I believed it because I was a believer. That's what made me seek 
for it because I was a believer. And he that believed it, ETH, don't stop believing it. Don't stop believing it. For by grace are you saved through faith. We are justified by the grace of God. I'm just going to hit some points. And, and we, we've already talked about that. The grace of God transformed us through the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. We are made heirs. I want you to know that once you've done this, you are heir to everything God has. You are heir to the kingdom. You are heir to, to heaven. You are heaven's heir. Okay? You, 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 like the, the culture connection say, you can die a pauper, but you got eternal life with Jesus. Remember, we are living it now. We are living how we want to live again. Glory to God. He's going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. Ah, glory to God. He's not even giving us the old stuff. He's preparing some new stuff. Hey, hey, new heaven, new earth. I'm going there. Woo! That's what I'm living for. I'm living for the new stuff. If he said that I'm a new man, he's making some new stuff for this new man. Yeah, hey, he said the old stuff. I'm just not going to let you settle for that. The angels are already up here doing what they do. But I'll give you a new one. Woo! 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 Hey, we got the hope of eternal life. That's what we got. We got the hope of it. We are saved by God's grace. It's by God's grace alone. And it's to whoever, so ever, whosoever will. While you were yet sinners, Christ died. While you were yet sinners, he shed his blood. While you were yet sinners, he got up and he sent back, back the Holy Ghost. While you were yet a sinner. So don't let being a sinner stop you from coming to Christ because he did all of this while you were yet in your sin. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ is the greatest display of love ever known. For the king of heaven became a man in order to die in our stead and redeem us back. That kind of sacrifice is truly amazing. And this goes back to evangelist lesson last week, the amazing grace. God's love and salvation are supreme evidence of his amazing amazing grace. See, these lessons, they tie into each other. So if you missed the last one, you can go back and look at If you missed amazing grace, you're able to go and look at it on our YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and, and, and click the notification button. You will always be notified when we upload to YouTube. But you can find that on YouTube. Evangelist Clark. Okay. Go to our website, rcafla.com, and you can click into and find our YouTube page. Praise God if you missed that lesson because all these lessons spin off of each other. They spin off of each other because they want you to take it's taking you on a journey. Ah, I'm, I'm loving the journey. I'm loving the journey. Praise God. You continue to pray for it. Our service will begin at 1130 and we turn it back into the hands of our pastor. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Did you enjoy the lesson? Did Praise you enjoy God. The lesson? Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, my God, I, I love this. I love this. Oh, God. And see, it's talking about the subject saved. And I thank God, like, see, because it, 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 show, it showed, I mean, experience. God gave us, she, she, she not only just taught the lesson, but she exemplified the lesson. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Was witness of the lesson. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you're witness of the lesson, yeah. it comes out like the lesson is glory to God. I, 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 I love it. <laughs> oh, glory to God. My God, my God. You sit there, you just like, it was a it was question I wanted to know. I'm like, go ahead. I was enjoying all that. We all enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. Do you see the excitement? Glory to God. When we're saved and delivered, when God has brought us, it's excitement that comes with it. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. And I love it. <laughs> oh, God. We got we to gotta get, yeah, get ready. But we got to get ready. We got to get ready. <laughs> oh, God. Because we get ready. We know. And that thing is, is that get ready, saints, because we got to get out of here. Yeah. This is a temporary. Morning, God. What we live in. Hallelujah. Thank God that it's temporary. Yeah. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory.
Praise God. God. My God, my God. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. We all enjoy it. My God, beautiful as a Savior. Yeah. Glory yeah. To God. Hallelujah. So we thank God that He, what He's doing in us, in our lives, what He continues to do. But God is awesome. So we don't, we don't let you go away so we can get back and get started. But we already started. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 